Hello everybody and welcome back to another Tableau Tip Tuesday, the series where we break down some of Tableau's functionality into its base elements to make it easier to understand and implement. Today we're going to be going over a much requested video. It's going to be an introduction to dashboard layout containers. So using our dashboard layout containers as opposed to building with just our sheets over here by dragging them onto our view, as you can see on the screen right here, uh, we're going to be learning how we can build more precise and pristine and uniform looking dashboards using some of our dashboard objects and layout containers right here. So the first way that we can build a dashboard is just by dragging from our sheets, in which case it's just going to segment anything that you see on the dashboard by half. So now we have half for our text object and half for our chart. If I drag another chart out there, you can see that we have other segmentation by half objects. Now we're not constrained by that. We can still change that and move it around. But what we're going to be going over in this video is how we can make more precise and uniform dashboards rather than just dragging our sheet on. We would like a hierarchical structure for the way that our dashboard is going to be represented. So let's go ahead and get to work. I got a couple of pre-built examples here that use varying levels of complexity and hopefully you can see that as we start to add that hierarchical structure to our templates here, um, it's going to give us a lot more control over editing those in the future. So feel free to go as complex or as simplistic as you would like. Just remember that sometimes uh, in Tableau going through the work now can kind of future-proof you in, uh, in the future um, so that we don't have to do some of these works and kind of hit some of these speed bumps as we go along in our design process. So our first template right here is built using our objects down here. Um, whenever I'm presented with a template or whenever I'm building a template, I always like to come over to this layout tab every now and again, just so I can check my hierarchy down here. So we can see we have our item hierarchy down here in our layout tab. And as we select these different options, it's highlighting the object that it pertains to. So you can see that we have a couple of vertical layout containers giving us pre-designated drop zones so we can place our charts. But you can notice some inconsistencies here. And just to kind of call some of them out, you'll notice that worksheet one in the title right here, you notice how that has a gray outline, whereas this one has a blue outline? Well, that's the difference between just a text object and a vertical layout container. Now, ideally, to improve this, we'd probably want these to be part of our hierarchy, right? We want this worksheet one to be known as an associate of that vertical layout container. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll cover how we can go ahead and do that. But as you can see, by using very simple elements, you can get a nice uniform looking template that you can distribute to your workers so that they don't have to spend a lot of time designing their dashboards. All they have to focus on is the analyses that they're going to place into these drop boxes, which again is a huge time saver there. If I toggle over to template two, you can see that it's looking a little bit more refined. And um, the way that we're able to accomplish this is by making a more complex hierarchy of layout containers over here. So if I expand this hierarchy, you'll notice that we have you know, a title bar right here that's showing us everything in that title bar. And if I expand that, we can see that there is you know, a title or a text object denoted by that A. And then it looks like we have an image object that's giving us our company logo over there. Then down here, looks like we have a blank layout container that's just basically giving us that line going through here to give us that visual separation. Next, we have our parameters and filters right here. So that filter bar going across the middle. But if we expand it, we can see all the different filters that we can add. And we have a nice, neat area where we can go ahead and add more filters should we need them. Then as we go down our hierarchy, we can see down here KPIs. That's going to be that blue bar that's giving us whatever KPIs we may need in here. And then we have our main body. Now, if I expand our main body, we're going to notice that hierarchy right out of the gate here. So we have our left and right half, and you can see those highlighting as I select them. But then as I expand those, we have left top and left bottom. So you'll notice that there are four different drop zones for us to place our containers in. Our left top, we can see if we expand that, it has a blank placeholder. This is only so that we can work on our spacing. And then we can see that table name kind of belongs to that layout container directly above it. So you can see that hierarchy start to take place. Now, this previous example, this is a good looking example, right? We don't have to try and put the cart before the horse and try and get all the bells and whistles, but you can see how you can have a more refined hierarchy, giving you the opportunity to move some of these objects together. So the benefit of having that that hierarchy is I can just select this blank area and we see that gray uh, bar indicating that it is not a vertical or horizontal layout container. And if I double click that, you can see it goes to its parent layout container, which is highlighted in blue because it is a vertical layout container. 
If I double click that again, it will move up that hierarchy one last time. And you'll see now we're in the parent of the left hand side. If we check over on our layout containers, we can see what we're what we're um, what we're highlighting here. And then if we continue to double click, now we're at the main body. If we double click again, we'll be at the vertical layout container that contains our entire dashboard. So this hierarchy is going to make it easy for me to grab parents and children. For example, maybe table one right here. We double click it to get the first parent. And now we can move both those objects together, which again is going to make it much easier to not have to play around with the formatting of the backgrounds and the borders and the padding and all sorts of things like that. All right, so let's go ahead and we're not going to build anything quite this uh, quite this nice, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to build a couple uh, ourselves. So we're going to start with the easy way um, of using just our dashboard options right here. And then hopefully as we build out more of these, we're going to start to realize that the more of these uh, dashboard objects that we add in, it's going to make it easier to maintain and reproduce some of these templates um, in future. <clears throat> all right, so if we go to all tiles right here, let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger for our audience. We can go ahead and just start building using our sheets themselves. So if we just take our bar chart out, it by default will take up the entire dashboard. And then as we take our map out, you know, it's going to segment by half. As we discussed earlier, we're not constrained by that. We can move these in and out over here. And then we can finish out our dashboard by just adding our time series. Now you'll notice that there is this nice vertical container over here that automatically brings all of your color legends and filters and things like that. But essentially, we've just made a dashboard here. Now we could continue to make this a little bit better. Maybe we could take a text object right here. We can place it along the top and maybe this will be our dashboard layout container. We'll call this dashboard title. Maybe make it centered and a little bit larger as a title should be. And then again, we can kind of skinny that up. We can place maybe our logo over in the top right where usually we are accustomed to seeing those. And we could choose our company branding logo right here. And then maybe we wanted to go ahead and move our filters around. Remember, we can always select those grips and move these objects where we would like them to be. But we're going to run into problems as we try and move these around. So you can see right here, this filter took up a lot more space than this filter. Now, if they were a part of a nice hierarchy, we'd just be able to grab them both and move them together. And indeed, there's additional options that, where you can do things such as distribute contents evenly. Now, since we haven't used any of our dashboard layout containers, those won't be an option to us and we will be stuck kind of manually taking our fingers here and um, uh, just trying to make that to be the size that we want. Now, you can see that Tableau has done a lot for you here. They kind of have these black ticker aerial arrows so we don't have to be very precise. They are snap points of other layout containers, which makes it a little bit easier. But again, I would rather just go into that layout container and just distribute those columns evenly so that I have, uh, I kind of take the guesswork out of the scenario. So there is no problem using this method. Um, you can go ahead and build your dashboards just dragging your sheets out. You can get something that's pretty slick. But remember, when you start on a new dashboard, if I'm a BI analyst that has no designing experience, this might be a little bit daunting. Hey, how do I want to place this? What orientation is best? Um, and we, we haven't given them pre-designated drop zones as we saw back in our template uh, examples right here, where again, they just don't have to mess with it. They just have to drag and drop. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can start building these with layout containers. So over here, uh, down in our objects section, we can add horizontal or vertical layout containers. And that just corresponds to how uh, how you want the charts to orient. Now, um, a big source of confusion here is if I put a horizontal layout container, I'm expecting my charts to align horizontally. And that doesn't seem to be the case. And we're going to explore why that is. So if I take horizontal and we drag that onto our dashboard here, you would think that I would have to place them horizontally, like so. However, if I back up one step here, we'll see that I can drop along the top of that layout container too. So whenever you get that blue outline, that's indicating that you're dropping in a layout container. If you don't get that blue outline, like we see right here, that means we're just tiling it on the blank canvas rather than putting it in that layout container. So why can I place a chart vertically when I laid a horizontal layout container? Well, that's kind of Tableau trying to help you out here. So if I go over to my layout container tab right here, you can see here is the horizontal container that I added right here. But you can see that it's made me a vertical layout container. This vertical layout container is the automatic one that comes when we dra uh, drag in our sheets for our filters and color legends. So we're not concerned with that one. 
But you can see that when I placed that map vertically, it automatically gave me a vertical layout container. So we'll, once again, we'll back up one step here just so we can see that happen. We have our horizontal layout container and we just have our bar chart right here. Again, that vertical is just the automatic color legend that comes through. And when I place my map on top, it's going to say, ah, he must have forgotten and wanted a vertical layout container and it automatically adds it for you. So it can be confusing when you're dropping it thinking, hey, um, I had an instructor tell me that it's going to orient horizontally, but now it's or I'm getting it vertically. So what's going on here? Well, it's because Tableau's giving it to you because it thinks that it's, uh, it, th it thinks it's helping you. And in most cases, it probably is it doesn't constrain you to having to select the correct layout container now we'll back up one step again here we'll get back to a blank dashboard if I go ahead and we add a horizontal layout container right here and then I'm just gonna add another vertical one directly below so I'm not placing the vertical one in because I get the blue outline there we're placing another vertical one below right here now if I place my map in my vertical on the bottom we're gonna see all the filters associated with that map um, uh, correspond horizontally on the top. So we have a horizontal layout container up here and a vertical layout container on bottom. And if I add my map to the bottom, we see horizontal layout of our filters. And if I go back one step and I add my map to the top, we can see that it's going to do a vertical filter layout on the bottom. So this is what I mean when I say horizontal and vertical only corresponds to the orientation of the charts that are going to uh, go inside of it. All right, so how do we get that parent-child relationship? So we, we want to go ahead and uh, start off by doing a little bit of planning, right? How do you want to orient your dashboard? You want to know where your charts are going to go. You want to know kind of what you're designing, where your title bar goes. Are you going to need some extra space for KPIs or filters? You know, knowing this in advance will really help you with that design process so that you're not stuck trying to nudge some of these borders right here down so you can add that filter bar later. Um, so first off, I know it sounds a little bit redundant, but start off with a little bit of planning. It really, really does go a long way. Next, we want to go ahead and start setting up that hierarchy so we can move these parents and children along with their assets here. So if we go ahead and add a vertical container right here, our goal is to get a chart and a title all in the same layout container. So we get a big blue outline here. Perfect. Next, we're going to drop our bar chart in here. And now since that bar chart is in a vertical layout container, I can take a text object and add it to that layout container. Again, don't add it outside where you get no dark blue outline. Add it within that dark blue outline and now you have started a parent-child asset. So we'll say um, sheet title here. We'll pretend we're working on a uh, template here. And now we get that sheet title. Now the beautiful thing here is when I double click on either of these gray outline bars, it's going to go to the parent asset, right? And again, if I double check my layout container, now we can see we have that hierarchy. We have our blank canvas, which is called tiled. We have that horizontal that was made automatically for us. Another horizontal, because remember we were playing around with where we add that sheet. And we have that vertical right here with its sheet titles and we can see that parent child. So that means that this vertical text box or this vertical layout container can always be moved together by just selecting the parent. Now, with only one layout container on the dashboard, that doesn't make too terribly much sense. So let's go ahead and we're gonna layer another one to the left of it. So in order to get it to the left of it, I need to add a horizontal layout container right here. And then we're gonna add both of those assets to the new hierarchical parent of this uh, uh, layout container that I'm adding right here. So again, we have no blue outline, indicating that we're adding it to our blank canvas. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our map to the left-hand side. By default, it will take up all of it, so you can see it doesn't matter where my cursor is. It's going to take up all of it. But now we can go ahead and take our bar chart here, and we can place it in that same horizontal container. Now, we have the makings of our uh, sheet. Now, we're not too worried about these filters up here. We'll go ahead and fix those here in just a little bit. But we can see that now we have a bar chart, and its parent asset is going to be its own sheet title. And then the parent asset altogether would be that map. So where's our shortcoming here? Why do we want to build this hierarchy? Well, we'll take a look here. We see we have a parent-child asset here of our bar and its title, but our map doesn't have that same setup. Now, you can always just use your sheet title, but I try and find more uh, formatting techniques that I can use. Sometimes I leave notes to myself in my title, so typically I won't have the actual sheet title showing. 
Well, if I try and add a text object to my map right here, you can see I can't add it to the top because I haven't set up that vertical hierarchy. I can do it over here on the left. You can see it's adding to that layout container right here, but I can't do the same option in my map because I neglected to add it to the vertical layout container before the horizontal. So as soon as you start nesting these layout containers, that's what's going to prohibit you from adding it to the top as we saw earlier where Tableau creates that layout container for us automatically. All right, so let's go ahead and go through the process here. We'll go ahead and add a vertical container somewhere in some blank dashboard space. Again, you don't want to place it in where you get that dark blue line because that's starting a hierarchy. But if I place it here where I get gray, I can now add my map to it. And I can add that text title to the top of the map. And then when we double click this, we can now add that back to our horizontal layout container right here. So now we have the beginnings of those hierarchies going. So we again, we have two vertical layout containers, one on the left and then one on the right. And then both of those belong to a horizontal so we can place them side by side in the dashboard. Let's go ahead and delete this blank placeholder right here. And now we're starting to get somewhere. So another thing that I like to do is I don't typically like all my filters to be appearing down the left or right hand side as is the default within Tableau. Not a good look for me as far as I'm concerned. I would rather have them in a title bar along the top, maybe underneath your dashboard title. So the first thing I'll do is I'll delete these color legends. And then we just want to arrange these um, filters horizontally around, uh, in a banner below the title. So again, we just add a horizontal layout container, being careful not to add it to the one that already exists. We want it up here on the top. And then if I take these filters and add them to this layout container, we can get that nice horizontal title bar looking uh, going across. Maybe we turn these into menu drop downs. And then maybe we select the parents and we say, hey, distribute all those contents evenly so that we don't have one larger than the other. We can go ahead and build this out here by adding a dashboard title along the top as well. Again, we could add it um, just to the blank canvas, but as we saw previously, having the logo, the buttons, and the title all in one parent can be quite helpful. So we'll just go ahead and add a horizontal layout container. Make that a little bit bigger so I can add stuff to it. That'll do. And we can add our text object here and say dashboard title. Maybe we add our company image over here on the right hand side. I'm not going to go ahead and pick an image here. Then maybe we could even add some navigation buttons. If we have multiple dashboards working in tandem, we can add these buttons to our title bar here. Let's go ahead and make a, now we'll just call it select to nav to marketing dashboard. I could type today. There we go. Select to navigate. Maybe we make those a little bit bigger so that we can actually read what's going on in there. And then maybe we edit this one and we can say all right move that up along the top right here so we have it a part of our hierarchy. Again select the parent so we can skinny up our filters right here and you can see the benefit of not having to move these one at a time right off the bat. And now if we go over to our layout we can see that parent child relationship so it makes it easy to move any of these objects with any of the other ones. All right, we'll close by taking a look at this one right here so we can see uh, a, a hierarchy that's all set up right here. And again, this helps your ending user too because you can kind of refine some of your own dashboards. For example, these thin blue lines, they're just blank layout containers that contain a background of blue and they're made really, really skinny. So if we go ahead and say edit our height right here, we can see they're just 12 pixels high. So you can also kind of pick through templates that have been provided to you and get a better understanding for what's going on in the design elements in the back. An added benefit is this keeps your business analysts working on analyses and then your designers working on pretty looking templates. All right, kind of a longer video for you, but that's all we have for you this week. Join us next week for another tip.